starts right now. Changes coming to San Antonio classrooms as the Omicron variant changes some people's minds on getting vaccinated. It's coming up, but first. They are scared that they could be next. That's how some people are feeling tonight after a new report that shows the city of San Antonio ordering people out of their homes and demolishing them at a much higher rate than other Texas cities. This as we face a housing crisis in San Antonio. The night team's John Paul Barajas takes a look at the data and gets answers from the city. I have a husband that works. He's the only one that works for all of us. So I'm scared. It's the fear of being pushed out and potentially being homeless by rising property values they can no longer afford. It's a sore subject for Anna Sandoval, who had to relocate earlier this year to San Antonio's west side. She and others in the area now feel the city is trying to clear them out. I'm here six months and they're already trying to, to, to buy the house for my landlord. How much do you think you and your wife could withstand before you guys might have to move out yourselves? <laughs> It goes a little bit more up, a couple of more hundred more up, it'd be still too much. According to a study from UT Law from 2015 to 2020, San Antonio has issued nearly a thousand vacate and demolish orders for homes that were deemed a safety hazard or not livable. 626 of them were for homes with people living in them. In that same time frame, four other major Texas cities only issued a combined 16. We, we disagree with the report in terms of some of the opinions and conclusions that they said. It's unfortunate, but you know our goal is to, to help the people uh, get out of unsafe conditions. San Antonio Director of Development Michael Shannon pushed back on claims that the city didn't follow protocols of holding hearings for the orders issued, suggesting everyone has the opportunity to fight the order if they choose to do so. Many of that does happen without a hearing. There is due process, though. Everyone can appeal that decision. He also argued the study's point that the city rarely assists families who had to be relocated. It is not 100%. There are some, there are some residents that uh, we, we connect them with family members. They don't get physical, uh, financial assistance. Uh, we do offer them the resources and other agencies' contact information. The study showed most of these orders to vacate and demolish came on the city's west and east side, hitting vulnerable low-income families of color. The majority of those orders happened in District 5, which is why their councilwoman, Terry Castillo, says she wants to address and amend current policy. I think this is very telling of a policy in place and uh, the history of racist policy. The councilwoman adds they have secured a million dollars to develop a program that will reduce the rate of the homes being demolished, such as which they are right now. And the director of development says they're going to be reviewing their own data to compare with the studies because they don't agree with it over the course of the next few weeks. At City Hall, John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, John Paul. She was fired from the San Antonio Police Department after video showed her punching a woman who was pregnant and handcuffed. Didn't take her long to find another job. She's serving at another area police department. Elmendorf's police chief says Elizabeth Montoya works as a support officer riding with another officer, working that job about 24 hours per month in the San Antonio suburb. She also assists with city court proceedings in Elmendorf. The chief there says he believes she can bring some good to the department, going on to say there are two sides to every story. Here's the other side. The San Antonio Police Department fired Elizabeth Montoya in 2019 after this. It's caught on, her, on it, this body cam footage. The woman, six months pregnant at the time, punched repeatedly with several blows to the head by Officer Elizabeth Montoya. Montoya is appealing her indefinite suspension with SAPD. An arbitration hearing is set for the end of January. This isn't the only incident either. The defenders also uncovered a similar situation involving Montoya and another person in handcuffs. We have the full breakdown of all these stories right now on KSAT.com. Let's turn now to the new Omicron variant. The White House announcing new steps to help prevent its spread. Here in San Antonio, a ruling on a mask mandate in schools is already having an impact on classrooms. Because an appeals court is blocking those mandates, San Antonio ISD says they will pause the mandate. During Monday's school board meeting, they plan to discuss how to move forward. Masks can help, but more people are moving to get their vaccine to boost their defenses against the virus as well. A pop-up vaccine clinic still happening in San Antonio. Amid news of a new COVID variant in the U.S., some people are hoping for protection with a shot and a booster. It could be me. I have it. It could be one of my grandkids or anybody, you know, so, yeah. 
and I almost lost my mom to COVID. So The variant hasn't been confirmed in San Antonio yet, but researchers continue to keep an eye out. Community Labs conducts weekly PCR tests in local schools. We designed our tests so that a three-year-old could, could self-administer this test. Meanwhile, the president laying out a sweeping push to get more Americans protected, including a new text tool where the public can message their zip code to 438-829 to find the nearest booster shot location. And when it comes to travel, the new rule requiring people flying into the U.S. to be tested a day before their flights going into effect on Monday. This is a moment we can do what we haven't been able to do enough of through this whole pandemic. Get the nation to come together, unite the nation in a common purpose to fight this virus, to protect one another, to protect our economic recovery. President Biden also announcing free at home rapid tests with reimbursement for Americans with private insurance. He says 50 million free test kits will go to the uninsured or those on Medicaid. And if you want to get a vaccine, you can speak with your local pharmacist or attend a pop up clinic. Metro Health has those locations listed on their website. We have it on ours as well. The pandemic also playing a role in talks at the Capitol. Several Republican lawmakers threatening to hold up a spending bill because of the president's federal vaccine mandate. But some good news tonight, a government shutdown averted, at least for now. A shutdown would have cost the U.S. economy $1.8 billion for each week the government is closed. That's according to estimates by S&P Global Ratings. Congress now has more time to work out a longer term funding plan for the full fiscal year. A familiar face in San Antonio may now be setting her sights on D.C. Rebecca Villagran served four terms as a councilwoman for District 3. Two sources, including one close to her, telling us tonight that she is running for the Texas 35th Congressional District. But when we asked her directly, she would only go as far as saying she's seriously considering a run. She went on to say, quote, I think the Bear County deserves a candidate and a voice in this congressional district race, this open seat for Congressional District 35, end quote. Congressman Lloyd Doggett plans to leave that district to seek election for the newly created 37th Congressional District, which is concentrated mainly in Austin. Via Gran expects to make an announcement next Saturday. Looking outside with our live cam right now toward the airport along 410 here, you don't really see the fog developing out there, at least not yet. Elsewhere, we have the fog already kicking in, and it's getting pretty dense along parts of I-35. San Marcos, visibility a quarter of a mile. New Braunfels down to half a mile. Even Bernie and Castroville starting to see reduced visibilities down to seven miles. We expect this fog to spread and be very dense as we get into the morning hours. Here's a look at our future cast for visibility. Uh, Later on this e tonight, even just after midnight, we expect visibilities down around a mile in some locations, even in and around Bear County for the morning commute tomorrow. Visibility is likely below one mile, so pea soup, thick fog to start the day. A little bit of dampness with some drizzle as well by the afternoon, even midday hours. Lunchtime, we'll see the sky clearing and also Steve, we've got a chance of rain to talk about. I'm going to get to that and how our next cold front is going to affect our temperatures coming up. But we could use it. Thanks, Adam. Let's move to a recall alert tonight. Fires leading to concerns over earphones. Five fires have been reported as well as four burn injuries. The DeWalt job site pro wireless headphones were sold at Home Depot, Lowe's and more in the past year. Investigators say they can overheat as they charge. You're also going to want to check your pantry for this next recall. There may be glass in certain 31 ounce jars of HEB creamy tomato basil soup. Fisher and Weiser. Specialty Foods says the alert was sent out after a customer reported finding a piece of glass inside one of these jars. Now, to see if your jar is impacted, you can check the Best Buy date for October 14th of 2022. If that is it, take it back to HEB for a full refund. It's still ahead on the night beat. Ada Vox's star is still rising. The well known San Antonio singer already hit the American Idol stage. Now there's a new crown she's going after. That story coming up. And a fundraiser met with holiday cheer. How it's helping Bernie keep a link to the past coming up. Plus a controversial border policy set to return. How the Biden, how the Biden administration is responding. It's next on the Night Beats. This essay salute holiday greeting is brought to you by the Joe A. Gomez Law Firm. Hi, my name is Luis Guerrero. This is Jose Loredo and this is Jorge Grajeda. And we are attorneys at the Gamez Law Firm. Enjoy the presents, enjoy the turkey, 
but more importantly, enjoy the family. Merry Christmas from the Joe Gomez Law Firm. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. A court battle bringing back a controversial policy to the southern border. The so-called remain in Mexico policy set to begin again on Monday. The Trump administration first used the policy to force many migrants to stay in Mexico to wait for immigration court dates. The Biden administration suspended then terminated that policy last year, but then a federal judge in Texas ruled doing so violated federal law. The Biden administration is appealing but we'll need to re-implement the policy with some added changes because of the pandemic. There are new steps being taken that are supposed to ensure cases are heard quickly and that migrants actually have access to legal counsel. Our coverage continues online. The latest article surround the rise in migrants now held in detention centers. We also take a look at how the pandemic is impacting legal proceedings for migrants. It's all online at ksat.com slash border. A San Antonio native back in the spotlight and walking onto a national stage once again. You remember Ada Vox, the singer dressed in drag, became known as the San Antonio showstopper on American Idol. Well, years later, Ada Vox continues to perform. And now the San Antonio celebrity is set to compete in another singing competition called Queen of the Universe. The competition kicked off today on the streaming channel Paramount Plus. Our own Ivan Herrera was able to sit down with Ada Vox for a one on one interview. You can check out the interview right now on KSAT.com. It's the latest edition of the South Texas Pride Q&A series. Are you still looking for that perfect Christmas tree? The Bernie Festival of Trees, your chance to bid on a unique tree or maybe a wreath. Decorating these trees more than a hobby. There's also a link to the past. The night team's Patty Santos tells us library staff in Bernie Hope the event will help keep some city history intact. You can see there's <laughs> tons of them. And we're going to try to figure out who they are. For Natalie Morgan and staff at the Patrick Heath Public Library, preserving Bernie's genealogy and history has become a passion project. We went from this very simple project to now this very involved project that's bringing families together. It's bringing life to a story that may not have ever been seen before. Earlier this year, the staff started digitizing materials in the family archives, cross-referencing information from different sources. They quickly discovered some gaps when it came to graves without headstones. No one knows that they're there unless they have the inside information that you know from their family. Some graves are marked with only a number. The library staff is meticulously searching for information about those buried there. They're the most wonderful people and they ha they deserve to have their story told. There's about five people staff have been able to identify, but they estimate there are more than 100 unmarked graves. Staff discovered number 96, for example, was Arthur Benson, an 18-year-old from the Midwest who came to Bernie in 1910 to be treated for tuberculosis. Sanitariums brought pulmonary and TB patients to Bernie for treatment from all over the nation. There's so many people out there that we're never going to know about because they died without anybody caring about what their story was. And this year, the Friends of the Bernie Public Library organization are using the annual Festival of Trees fundraiser to support the staff's effort to preserve the city's past. Once we get through the digitizing and get all that kind of, you know, put together, then we're going to start working with the different organizations at the cemetery. We want to, you know, clean headstones. We want to replace headstones. The, just it's it's like a, you know, a big project. Here's how you can help support this passion project. On Saturday, all these trees are going to be put up for auction. We have information on how you can bid on KSET.com. In Bernie, Patty Santos, KSET 12 News. What a great program. All right, let's go to far west Bear County right now. Ooh la la. Look at that. This is called Lights Alive. It's a drive through display, obviously, in far west Bear County. And that is impressive right there. I like the pattern to it. That's the nice thing about lights these days. They're so it's so creative because of the LEDs and how they can change color and they can go to patterns yeah. and songs and it's totally changed how we look at Christmas lights. You know, first I was going to say this is the Caskey backyard, but uh, I don't think you probably even have your lights up yet. Steve, you know I can't handle that traffic right now. Okay, so thank you. <laughs> oh, that's for it. Quiet. That's it. Okay, yeah. good. No, I've got uh, maybe close to about 1,100 strands on one of my oak trees wrapped around. Okay, you got them up. 
<laughs> Some of them, not all. Oh, okay, so all that's right. One okay. oak tree. Yeah, got it. Yeah, my buddy last night said, so do you make sure every bulb is pointed out? <laughs> Absolutely, Cody. They're all pointed outward. You got to get it just right. You don't mm. want, yeah, you don't want the strand covering the bulb. <sighs> okay, anyway, I digress. We have the fog out there, and the fog is going to be pretty thick late tonight, especially for the morning commute tomorrow. High temperatures today above average. 75 here in San Antonio, up to 85 in Del Rio and Catula. Even Pleasanton and Hondo, 81 degrees. Above average temperatures are going to be the rule, but there will be a little dip here in the days ahead. So let's talk numbers. We already talked about the fog. We're already losing some visibility in spots. That's going to be an issue tomorrow, but let's get into the numbers and temperatures. So across the state, Amarillo 49, 72 Brownsville and Del Rio, Alpine at 60 degrees, already some 50s in the hill country, but 70 in Carrizo Springs, 70 Catula, Hondo now at 63. The temperature is starting to drop down near the dew point. Once those two meet, you get saturated. Go outside right now, you're probably already noticing dew along the grass and uh, cars parked outside, especially those elevated surfaces. Dew already forming this early in the night without any other changes. Thick fog is likely, and that's what we're seeing. But temperature wise, we're not going to see a big drop from where we are right now. We'll just be around 60 degrees tomorrow morning, and then by the afternoon we clear out, and I think it's back into the mid 80s along the Rio Grande and even just south and west of San Antonio, the 80 degree mark. I'm pretty close to it around parts of town. Converse 78, Castorville 80, Elmendorf Von Army about 79, the high temperature. But here's that little dip. We get into Monday. Early morning cold front is going to kick up the north wind, get rid of the humidity and drop the high temperature down to 65 on Monday. So it's quite a difference from the near 80 on Sunday to the mid 60s on Monday. But keep in mind, mid 60s is average for this time of year. I mean, the average high today is 67 degrees. And so we'll be in the mid upper 60s Monday, Tuesday of next week. So if you don't like this mugginess and the above average and not very fall like temperatures. There's going to be a cold front, a weak one, but it's going to change things. So there are those dew points anywhere from the 50s in the hill country to 60s elsewhere. Again, temperature dew point meet. We're saturated and we're going to see that fog and get ready for more foggy mornings Saturday and Sunday. That's going to be the trend. Monday humidity has gone. So let's talk about rain chances. Little Subtle swirl in West Texas right now near El Paso. On the south side of it, we've got this energy coming across Mexico. Flared up some thunderstorms earlier today and even still just west of the Rio Grande. That could bring a few showers along the Rio Grande overnight tonight. So Eagle Pass, Camado, maybe even Del Rio, you could have a quick hit of rain. But that energy is going to cross over San Antonio around the morning commute. And so all across South Central Texas, we could see a few hit or miss brief showers and possibly a rumble of thunder here and there during the morning commute mixed in with the fog up through about the noon hour tomorrow. By the afternoon, we're expecting sunshine and temperatures well into the 70s next week. Early Monday, just a 20% chance of rain. We could use good rain. Unfortunately, it's still not in the works. It's good weather for putting up your lights. Always is. Yeah. Thank you, Adam. All right. A lot going on tonight, including the Spurs starting their West Coast road trip, Greg. And apparently they took with them the confidence they built in back-to-back -back wins at home on this West Coast road trip because they've gotten off to a great start in Portland. When we come back, the early highlights to show you about the Spurs and the Blazers and the Roadrunners hold a big pep rally tonight before the biggest game in school history coming up. There you go. Before they face the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers, a big pep rally held on campus at UTSA tonight to fire up the fans and the students as they continue to make school history by playing in their first ever Conference USA Championship. More on that in a moment, but first. The Spurs looking for their third straight victory tonight as they start a three-game road trip in Portland, and San Antonio takes control of this one early on. Doug McDermott back in the lineup. It's the triple. Spurs jump out to a 6-0 lead. Later in the first, Derek White with a bounce pass to Thaddeus Young for the wide-open dunk. Spurs up by nine, and then Young comes up with a steal, starting the break. Lonnie Walker, the four, finishes with a tomahawk jam. Spurs rolling up by 10 after one. Second quarter, Keldon Johnson drives, goes up and under for the basket. Count it, plus the foul. Spurs leg by as many as 24. They're up 68-47. 
57 at halftime. Now in the second half, they're leading 77 to 51. LeBron James has been cleared to return to play by the NBA following two negative PCR tests conducted more than 24 hours apart. Key James was originally placed into the league's health and safety protocols on Tuesday after a series of tests delivering conflicting results. According to a statement released by the league today, he has missed one game against the Kings, which the Lakers won and will now be available for the Lakers game against the Clippers tomorrow night. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. The Houston Texans are preparing for the Indianapolis Colts after dropping to 2-9 following the 21-14 loss of the Jets in a battle of the two of the worst teams in the NFL last Sunday. One of the bright spots in that loss is a play of Titus Howard at left tackle. He was moved to that position after playing the first 10 games at left guard. The Texans might consider leaving him at left tackle after he scored a 79.4 for his performance, his highest evaluation of the season, according to Pro Football Focus, compared to his career worst, 47.6 at left guard. How did Titus think he did? We're just pretty much getting used to, you know, playing back in space. And uh, I think I did a pretty good job. It's always stuff I feel like myself uh, that I can learn on and I can learn from. Uh, it's a couple of plays I wish I could, you know, been better for my team. Uh, but my job is to be better this upcoming week. And uh, that's my goal for this week. All right. It's the night before the conference championship game, but not before the Roadrunners rally tonight. Next. I feel like I know all of you. I think we passed out cookies, donuts, pizza. I apologize that I've introduced myself more than once to you, but we are so grateful. This was a scene on campus tonight as the UTSA Roadrunners held a big pep rally before they face West Kentucky Hilltoppers tomorrow in the Alamo Dome for a shot at their first ever Conference USA Championship. Head coach Jeff Taylor was on hand along with Mayor Ron Nirenberg, School President Taylor Amy, UTSA Athletic Director Lisa Campos, cheerleaders, and the entire UTSA football team. But watch Coach Trailer have some fun with the crowd. I do want to practice if you don't mind, all right? We're going to practice real quick. You ready? I know you are smart, but we're going to be really, really smart tomorrow, right? Bailey Zappi is supposedly, supposedly the best quarterback in the country. He wears number four, right? Number four, right? Very good. I'm going to pretend like I'm him. All right, so when I run on the field, that's when y'all get loud as you can, right? Now, look, we're not done. When you see him communicate with his hands, he's changing the play then, right? So what do we do then? We get louder, right? So we're going to practice. I I'm Bailey Zappi. I'm running out on the field right now. You ready? Here I come. Good. Good. <laughs> Help the Roadrunners stop the Hilltoppers by packing the dome tomorrow at 6 o'clock. Now, while the Roadrunners are playing in their first ever Conference USA Championship, the University of the Incarnate Word Cardinals are in the second round of the FCS playoffs for the first time in school history. They will face the number one ranked and undefeated Sam Houston Bearcats Saturday in Huntsville after knocking off Stephen F. Austin at home last weekend, 35-28 in overtime. We definitely, you know, we're trying to prove something on Saturday that, you know, we can play with the with the top teams in the nation because, you know, we haven't really got respect much of the year. Uh, we'll see, you know, they got some good defensive players for sure, so it'll be fun to just go out there. You know, one of the best offenses against one of the best defenses, so we'll see how it matches up. All right, kickoff Saturday, Huntsville set for 2 p.m. One of the most anticipated rematches of the playoffs, 13-0 Shiner taking on 13-0 Refurio in the Class 2A state quarterfinals. Comanche strike quickly after a Tyler Bishop interception. Dalton Brooks hurdles over defender for the two-yard score. 7-0 Shiner. Later in the game, Dalton's brother Doug bursts through the line, and he is off to the races. Look at the big fellow weaving his way through the defense. Not just power, he's got speed, too, all the way down to the two-yard line. Dalton finishes the drive off with a two-yard score. Comanche's rolled into the state semifinals with a dominant 55-4 victory. Let's see how the Cowboys are doing. This is late in the fourth quarter. Still a shootout. Look at that. I don't even know they got to the two-minute warning yet here. The Cowboys are leading 27-17, and the Saints actually just scored despite four interceptions by the Dallas Cowboys. We've got all the highlights for you on that tomorrow. And let's hope the Spurs keep that 20-some point lead. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Thanks, Greg. We'll be right back. Already starting to see the fog develop, especially north on I-35, New Braunfels, San Marcos area, and some outline areas of uh, Bear County. But the fog's going to thicken up overnight. It's going to play a role in the morning commute tomorrow. Even a few showers to start today. Can't rule out a rumble of thunder. Mornings near 60, afternoons well into the 70s. It's going to be the same all the way through Sunday until we see a little temperature drop off and a clear sky on Monday. Thank you, Adam. That's it for the Night Beat GMSA at 430. Have a great night.